Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for October 28th, 29th, and 30th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, if you're new to the channel, or if you just want to bypass and cross-watch, then down there under the description is a timestamp, because this is the introduction, and it's on all the videos. So if you want to bypass, go straight to the whatever the video is you want, the part of the video you want, go down there. Okay? Okay. Now, you know that this is the weekend, and I want to thank everyone. I am starting to feel better. I'm starting to actually have more energy, which is wonderful. Uh, I will be getting on uh, soon. I've been reading the comments, but I haven't been able to answer the comments just yet. Um, I still I go to answer the comments and say, oh, I think I need a little nap. Sorry, so I'm still napping during the day. Whatever this is, it's not horrible. It just makes you want to sleep. So don't worry about any of this. Carve out some time, should this happen, where you can get some rest. Chicken noodle soup or chicken soup, wonderful, wonderful recovery tool. Anyway, anyway, this is the weekend, so I am going to be using my Radley Valentine deck, my Angel Tarot cards. For the main reading, I will use my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. I will use my um, Doreen my Doreen Virtue and Grant Virtue, the Angels of Abundance, and of course I'll pull one from my Emily Anderson Crystal deck. Now, because this is, in the, this is the introduction, I am going to be using my uh, Wake Rider Tarot deck, and I'll pull about three cards from there, and then I will pull one from my Colleen Barrett Reed, The Good Tarot. I have prayed, meditated, and, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. Just remember, these are general readings. They may or may not resonate. Take what you like, leave the rest, okay? Okay, now just kind of going over what's the weird stuff going on in the world. You know, we are in Scorpio season. As of today, we did have that, we are having that new moon. Um, it was a partial solar eclipse, which actually um, gives a really big start, jump start to whatever's going to be happening right now. And then in two weeks later, we are going to have that full moon, and it's going to be um, a Taurus full moon, and it will be a total lunar eclipse. Now, normally that's not so bad, but we're in the, you know, we are in the, and I shouldn't say so bad, we are in the Taurus, it, Taurus is in the northern node, and Scorpio is in the southern node. Scorpio has this, um, you know, Scorpio in the southern node brings about a lot of karmic past, okay? While Taurus in that northern node is about building a future. But we are in the karmic past. We are dealing with some things that maybe we didn't deal with right, or maybe we were just not aware of. And remember, too, and I know you, you, you have to look at this whole big thing um, and it's almost, it gets very, very overwhelming. You know, I talk about Saturn, Saturn, you know, illusion versus reality, and so many things that we haven't really looked at that's the reality of our world. Then we have um, something that just went on, or I talked about the, the full moon, and that's going to have some Uranus type of uh, influences, really, really strong Uranus type to the point people have said that, you know, when I, I just do my research, a lot of this is what I get from my feelings and from my research per se, um, or how I, uh, how I interpret what I'm getting from research. But they're saying that there's going to be so much of this, it's going to be very structured, very strictured. It's just going to be very boxed in type of energy, especially around that full moon. So, you know, so that in itself, very, very tight. And again, you know, I'm always talking about that good old Saturn in Aquarius. Now, the other thing that we need to um, talk about is, okay, um, basically we have Pisces, we have, what is it, um, we have Jupiter that has been retrograding, and it is, you know, it is retrograding um, from Aries into Pisces. Now, I would said it wasn't necessarily going slow, but it is starting to go slow because Around November, I'm not sure, November 20th or something, it starts to go direct again. So this goes back into that retro, it's starting to go direct, um, retrograde stationary. And this is where things start to look at, you know, I'm always thinking the stationary part is where the energies are really concentrating on whatever needs to happen 
now. Okay, so it is doing that. But then we also have on the 29th, Mercury entering Scorpio. So again, news, um, you know, um, you know, news, electronics, um, hearing things, just, you know, just, just fast acting, you know, almost, almost like not being able to hold on to your hat. Remember, it's like hold on to your hat uh, where, you know, things are about to get shaky now or things are about to move fast. That's what's going to be happening more with Mercury in Scorpio. And remember, Scorpio to me um, does not like secrets. Uh, Scorpio also has that transformation type of energy, such as Pluto has, you know, the, the, the rising of the phoenix. But another interesting part, though, is October 30th. Mars is going retrograde. So what's interesting about that is we're ending, we're coming to the end of a retrograde season. Okay, I think that even um, Neptune goes direct, I think, in, you know, early December. So we're coming to this, we're coming to this, um, you know, towards the end where it should be tapering off the retrogrades. And now we have a new retrograde that is going into place. So those are little oddities. Another little oddity. So what does it mean? You know, it just means that things are happening that we are not used to be seeing happening. And um, again, it's like they really, all of this um, planetary movement wants to really shake things up more and more and more. Now, the other interesting thing that's kind of lovely for us, though, is I did post, I think it was more on Facebook, I'm sorry, I, you know, not feeling as well. I did not post it on our community chat, you know, here. But I posted this thing about with Venus. Venus goes through this cycle. Um, it's a, it's a one-year cycle, and but then it does it eight, you know, eight years in a row. And it, when it does this, and if you look at the computer simulation of it all, it turns into this beautiful flower pentagram very loving, you know, just very beautiful to, you know, to behold. Now, for the last 90 plus years, this petal, um, you know, this petal um, um, journey, this petal journey, and like I said, it does it every eight years, each petal starts and has been ending in Scorpio. This time around, it is, you know, it is doing it in Libra. So it will be doing this for a good and another 90 to 100 years where it starts in Libra season and then it ends in Libra season. And like I said, it creates, it does this for an eight year cycle until it comes to the beginning again and it creates something quite beautiful. It, it really, really is a beautiful thing. So let's see what we have here. Um, Venus is in Scorpio. We are in Scorpio. The new moon is in Scorpio. We do have, um, you know, like I said, Mercury is entering into Scorpio, and Mars, Mars in Gemini, is going retrograde on at 9.26 a.m. That's Eastern Standard Time. And, you know, that's Mars... Now, I do associate Mars with Aries because Mars is Aries. Aries is Mars, Greek, Roman, mythology, whatever you want to say. But Mars is also very strongly um, connected with that recycle, that birth, that death birth type of energy of Scorpio. So we're, I just feel like these two weeks, the, you know, um, there's just a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff and just be prepared for an interesting ride. Um, you know, the other thing though is not to worry about any of it. Not to worry about any of it. These are things that happen and, um, you know, it just, it just, we just continue. Whatever is going on in the world, in the universe, no matter how, you know, it can feel very, very stressful and we, you know, I do get stressed too, but I still have to live my life, okay? And I still work to keep my vibrations high because that's, that's part of our job is to keep our vibrations high. Lots of activity happening this coming weekend, coming and going. We have the Eight of Rods, Eight of Fire. Lots of activity happening. Um, again, not knowing if we're coming or going. Fire energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy. 
um, passionate, very burning, very determined energy. Eight, unlimited opportunities and possibilities. Things happening that we're not necessarily, like I said, things happening that we're not necessarily in the best control of. But it's not, they're not, it's not horrible energy. It's not um, out of control energy. They are, but again, we don't know if it's coming or going. Okay, let's see what else we might have here. Remember, Rods, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, burning, passionate, determined. Next card up, the world. So this is reverse. So the reversed energy um, has, you know, a, to me, it's a little stronger energy. Other people read reverse cards differently. I just say, hey, pay attention. So we have a 21. We have a 2. Two is choices, decisions. We have a one new beginning. The world is basically things are things are completed, things are done, things are happening. But you've done your what you needed to do. Now, could it just be that there's a lot of? Could we just read it very simply that there's a lot of activity going on in the world? Um, we don't know if we're coming or going. Definitely, we can do that. But the world does give a very good vibration that says, you know, again, not to not to worry, not to stress. These are things that have to happen. They have to happen in order for a lot of that, you know, a lot of what I was just saying in the heavens to be completed. Okay, next card is, now we have that seven. We have that seven. Um, seven is a divine number to me. It is, well, it is a divine number. It gives me a divine umbrella. It says that even if things are happening you don't like, it is happening for a reason, and there is a divine covering, okay? Now we have a sword energy. Sword energy is our air energy. It is our Aquarius, our Gemini, and our Libra energy. So, you know, basically um, Aquarius and Gemini have a lot going on in the game right now. They're, you know, um, Gemini, Mars Mars, by going retro, is going to be covering a lot of old ground. And what, you know, like I said, whenever things, and it's retro stationary right now. So it's kind of watching, watching and seeing what do I need to do. But as it goes retro and it starts to pick up a little more movement, it goes and um, really looks at what was left undone. So, you know, what, what else needs to be cleaned up? Now, we do see this guy. This does have a kind of that five of sword energy where he kind of has that sneaky snake energy. So swords is about making plans, thinking things through. It is about um, um, basically, like I said, hearing news too. But it's all about, hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. But um, So like I said, there is that sneaky snake type of stuff. But the seven of swords to me is giving me a trickster energy right here it's kind of like look over there don't look over here so let me divert your attention um i you know i'm kind of like you know while you're while you're thinking everything's all nice over here i'm i'm making do i'm making way and i'm taking the how many the five swords over here so there is a sneaky snake energy here but there's also a trickster energy. So be aware of your environment. Be aware of, um, like I said, this has to do with um, making plans, but it's also hearing news. It's also strategy. So again, it's, you know, does it concern the world? It could. The world, though, does give us that energy that says, you know, not to worry so much. But lots happening. Look over here. Don't look over there. There's a trickster energy. There's a diversion energy and it surrounds the world. So let's see what we've got going on here. Let's see for this energy, for this going on. Higher power. Now remember, if I didn't say this, I am an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power, Holy Spirit, God, who, whatever, whoever that is that you say, I say God, Holy Spirit, and just say whatever you want, whatever you, you know, this is your channel, not mine. So here we go. Let's see what we've got. Higher power, what else is there about this this weekend? Interesting times. As always, interesting times. You ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, how lovely is this? Okay, so again, reversed. We have drawn the tower card. So this is a 16, this is a 1, 
new beginning, 10, transitional energy. Six is the number of man. It's the energy you put into something. One plus six, though, is a seven. So it is divinely covered. It is divinely guided. It is the tower card. It is where everything feels like it's falling apart and falling down. But, in art, but again, it's one of these times that it has to do this. Now, there is also a very big cleansing with this falling. There is this very, um, there's a sense of, you know, whatever this is that's falling apart, it is getting rid of the things that we don't need anymore. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy energy. It doesn't mean that it's easy to get through. We have to maintain, you know, we just have to keep our eyes, you know, on, on, on this world card. We have to remember things will turn around, things will, you know, it, everything goes full circle energy. But the Tower card is not, is not necessarily a pleasant card to go through. But in order for something to be, you know, to be rebuilt, or I shouldn't say rebuilt, in order for something to be built, um, uh, you know, it needs solid ground. Um, I do get this energy with this, though. I, get, I am picking up a lot of the gray energy here. But I do have that blue sparkles, come, not sparkles, but the blue kind of shi shining through also. But the gray energy is not necessarily, like I said, it's not necessarily a positive, but it's something that has to be done in order for things to be moving on. Okay? Interesting stuff. Can't really tell you. You know, we, we will see what we will see. Um, please take a moment. I know being off that one time, it messes up the algorithm so much. So I would really appreciate it. If you could like, share, subscribe, click on the bell, comment. If you've done all of that, undo it and do it again. I get a lot of people telling me that, um, you know, my videos just don't pop up. I do put them in playlists. And I also get a lot of people telling me that there's missing videos. And I know I really don't post anything until I have all the videos ready to go. So if you could do that, I'd appreciate it. I'm a small channel and I just would that would just help a lot. Anyway, why don't we get started with our videos now? Hello, my Pisces, and how are you doing? Well, we got some interesting energies going on right now. We've got Jupiter going into, you know, it's retrograding back into Pisces, and it will be getting slower as it becomes, you know, state, then it becomes stationary direct as it gets ready to go back to direct so again what did i say december 1st 2nd maybe is that what i said anyway so but it will be in it is in your sign so it is about a really really thinking things through and making some making your plans now you put down your plans you get your plans in order and then once it starts to go right from pisces into aries that's when I'm going to say, you know, that's when you need to strike, okay? So let's see what we've got going on for my Pisces higher power. What do, would you like to tell our Pisces here? Here we go. Pisces. Interesting work, interesting stuff going on this weekend. Here it is. This one is reversed. First card. The wheel. Things have to move on. Things are moving on. Things are changing. And where you've been feeling a little bit on that stuck side, things are opening up for you. Now again, this this you know eclipse part is going to be kind of a you know it is making the piece of sand into the uh, pearl and it is helping to create that diamond because of the pressures that are coming on. But you're going to see an opportunity to make, you know, you're, you're going to be, see an opportunity for a lot of your plans to put into action already. So you, there might have been a time, maybe you've been stalling a little bit, maybe you've been, you know, making, you know, getting ready. Again, I am going to say that um, when it, when Jupiter, it starts to go from my, um, from Pisces into Aries, that's when you're really, I'm going to say that you really need to act but I will tell you, I do think this is a good time for you to get ready and get, you know, get ready, get set, get, you know, on your mark, get set, go type of energy. Things are moving. Things are changing. They will not always feel comfortable, but they will benefit you. 
Okay. So we have Archangel, we have a 10, one new beginning, 10, you know, transition, zero is God source energy. Archangel Michael is the um, warrior, ener- uh, warrior angel, and he's also the defending angel. So there we go. Very strong arms there, too. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, strong arms. It's, it's, it's a very um, dependable and very somebody you can lean on energy here, too. A time of positive change. A situation suddenly moves forward. Fortune is on your side. So if you've been ready, you know, if you've been waiting, you know, remember preparation to meet opportunity, definition of luck. So it's just kind of like it might just, the gates might just open up and the flood rushes through. May feel a little overwhelming at times, but I kind of get this, I'm kind of getting a water thing, like, you know, like a, you know, and I feel like you're going to ride the wave. Here we go. Next card reversed, the Knight of Air. Well, the Knight, oh, my nose is itchy too, excuse me. The Knight's underlying energy is fire. Um, I'm sorry, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. But air energy is the overlying energy. So this is, again, that sword energy. Aquarius, um, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff with Aquarius and Gemini going on. And especially with this Mars thing going on with Gemini. So this is fast moving. Like I said, it is thought processing. It is making plans. It is hearing news. But the night of air assimilates the information and then moves quickly with it. So, you know, the fire energy underlying is, you know, very consuming, very passionate. But then, you know, so it's like you're going to you're going to need to really think quick and move quick. Because once something starts moving, it's, it's going to be very quick decisions. You're going to have to, you're, it's going to have to be like this. You know, snap, snap, chop, chop. Let's get moving. Things have to happen. Let's do it now. You know, we, we don't have time to waste anymore. We've got to get it done. That's what this night of air is telling me right now. So intelligent, decisive, idealistic, tireless. Events that occur with great speed. Take time to carefully review your options creative solutions. The only thing is with this, where it says to take time to carefully review, I'm not going to tell you not to t- not to review or take the time. I just don't think you're going to find the time to do it. I really feel like your energies, it's just that you're going to be, you're just going to be like, well, what do we do? You know, come on, come on, come on. It's kind of like, um, I don't, I don't feel like there's a fire burning, but it's almost like you have to control the fires. You, you know, you have to, you might be put in a position where you have to put out several fires at the same time. You're just going to have to think quick and you're going to have to be quick. Okay. Okay. Next card, the 10 of water. Well, whatever it is, it's a lovely energy and you've got the backing of your family, the loved ones, people that care about you. So it's interesting. We have a one zero one zero ten ten energy here. Water is your sign. It is all, your energy. It is also um, Cancer. It's also Scorpio energy. Very fluid, emotional. This is being blessed. This has blessings from above. This is feeling blessed, but it's it's, it's a little bit more. Um, it's more spiritual than the Ten of Earth per se. This is just whatever you're going to do is has a blessing to it. You're doing the right thing. You're being blessed as you as whatever this is that you're moving into. And again, transition, transition. A contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met. Trustworthy relationships. So whatever you're, whatever's happening around you, just feel the blessings. Know that you're blessed. Know that you've got this. Know that you definitely, you know, you, you're, the, you're the person for the task. You're the one, you know, you're the one that in many ways has been chosen for this time. Okay? So let's see what we have here. And I love the 10, 10, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Here we go. What else? What else for our Pisces do we have here? Okay. Five. Okay, so we have a five. There is change energy here. Positive, negative. This is financial and material changes. Now... This is sometimes this feels a little shaky. It's like, well, which way is it going to go? Which way, you know, is it, am I going to be losing? Am I going to be winning? Am I going to be gaining? Well, the thing is, we have to remember, we've got these wonderful energies right here. So I kind of get whatever this is, that is going to determine this. 
And, but the thing about this is, now, I, I never quite understand what these, these you know, um, I kind of get this stained glass type of, you know, feeling with this card right now. And I kind of, you know, with stained glass, they do lead. There's lead. But yet at the same time, there's rings on this person's fingers. So it's not like this person ha is impoverished because there's rings on the per on the fingers too. So while we're looking at, you know, but usually the five, the five when it's with, you know, in traditional tarot, it's kind of got a, oh, not quite sure if this is the way I want to go with this. But I am thinking that there is a lot of possibilities for good possibilities. In itself, I'd kind of go, eh, a little shaky with the material and the financial changes. But because of what you do up here, it's a, it, it looks like it's either going to stabilize your finances and material. It's going to either stabilize it or it's going to grow it. Okay? I do not feel like it's going to be pulling out. But whatever the fine, and, and it could also be, whatever is going on in the world, always remember that you've got this blessing upon you too. So we got kind of a double met thing. Is this causing this? Or because of this, do you remember to hold on to this? Either way. Either way, it looks like you're going to be good. You're going to be fine for this weekend. Okay? So let's see what we have. Again, there's blood, there's with those tens, there's a lot of blessing energy there. Okay, let's see what we've got with the abundance of angels for our Pisces here. Let's see. Pi oh, okay. Bountiful, bountiful nature. So hey, that's a good, that's lovely. Spending time in nature helps shift you to a higher vibration and remind you of God's infinite abundance. Go outside and walk or bike with your, um, yeah, walk, walk or hike. <laughs> Might need new glasses. Walk or hike with your pet. Meditate beneath a tree, garden, sit up under the stars, or do some other activity to connect with the limitless vastness. Bountiful nature. So again, there is a lot of uh, good possibilities. There, again, bountiful nature, you're covered. You've got this covered. Whatever this is all about, there's a covering over you. Okay, let's see what we've got here. What crystal or energy. Here we are for my Pisces. Here we go. Okay. Black tourmaline. You know, that's probably my most favorite one. But black tourmaline is protective. Anxiety relief or a cleansing self-belief. Get yourself some black tourmaline if you don't already have some. Anyway, my Pisces, it looks like it's going to be an interesting weekend. Lots of changes and transitions for you. But again, you know, there's a lot that says you're blessed, you're covered, not to worry about it. Um, you know, like I said in the beginning, the introduction may feel uncomfortable, but you've got this. Okay, and again, that, that bountiful nature, that, you know, connecting, that's a, always a good thing. Okay, my Pisces, take a moment, please, because this helps. A, real, a small channel like mine, this does help. So please like, share, subscribe, click on the bells for notification, or the bell. As always, my Pisces, know that you are loved. Stay shining. Be blessed. Bye-bye.